good afternoon. I'm Dr. Barbara Tenney, Chair of the Board of Trustees, member of the Class of 67. On behalf of all the members of the Board of Trustees of Wilson College, I would like to extend our congratulations to the graduates and families of the Class of 2022. At this time, I would ask that you remain standing for the invocation by Reverend Derek Wadlington, Besh Clarkson College Chaplain, and Director of our Kern Bonner Leader Program. Please remain standing for the National Anthem. Thank you, Dr. Tenney. See, even in life when you know what you're doing, you still manage to not find your seat and wander around for a while, and it's okay. <laughs> if it be your way, please pray with me. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for this glorious afternoon that you have created. We give thanks for the chance to gather here, to celebrate, to mark this tremendous milestone. We give thanks for these graduates who returned for more education. May it fill them and send them out again into the world uh, to do your calling, to serve, uh, to educate, and just to live the tremendous lives that they have. We are grateful for those who created this institution, who have kept it running for 153 years, for those who serve now and have always served with passion and love and caring. May you move through all of us and continue to do good in this world. Amen. may be seated. Good afternoon. For those of you who have not yet met, I'm Wes Fugit, president of Wilson College, and it is my distinct honor to welcome you to today's commencement activities for the graduates of the class of 2022. What a privilege it is to participate in such an important tradition in the life of the college. Commencement is the culmination of often years of hard work and the pursuit of academic achievements. For many of you, today is a celebration of perseverance and persistence. You have balanced your coursework with family obligations. And as if that was not enough challenge, the world tossed in a pandemic to add to the mix. Most importantly, you made it. You made it through the unforeseen ups and downs, the twists and turns, make a commitment to furthering your education, your future will always bring. I'm so glad, yet so proud, to be here in person with you outdoors to celebrate your graduate degree from Wilson College. Graduates, today is your day, your chance to walk across the stage like so many before you. Embrace this moment, let it soak in. You've earned it. I hope you enjoy today's celebration of you. Before we get started, a few housekeeping details. Graduates, when you join me on stage to accept your diploma and be hooded, it is customary for you and me to shake hands or for me to offer congratulations. If you are not comfortable with a handshake due to COVID-19, that's perfectly okay. I am fully vaccinated and boosted. However, we can fist bump or elbow bump instead. Whatever works for you, I will follow your lead. And parents, family, and friends, we are thrilled you are able to join us today. To help keep the proceedings moving along, I would ask that you stay seated during the ceremony. Pictures Plus is here from Waynesboro to take photos of each graduate, and that photo will be made available to the graduate via email free of charge in the coming week. 
I also bring you greetings on behalf of Wilson's faculty, staff, administration, and trustees. The Wilson family is grateful for the contributions that our students have made to continuing scholarship on our campus. Your time at Wilson has prepared you to be stronger leaders of your generation, your discipline, and beyond. You have the skills, the passion, the persistence, the critical thinking skills to further your goals and to make our world a better place. Thank you for choosing Wilson College as your partner on this journey. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Ralph Isilo for the Graduate Student Address. Ralph earned his baccalaureate degree majoring in English from Columbia College in New York City in 1962. And in the fall of 2016, he matriculated into Wilson College's Master of Humanities program. His career in insurance began as an underwriter with the General Insurance Company. He later became an insurance broker with large brokerage firms and retired from Marsh McLennan Agencies, currently the largest worldwide broker listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Ralph moved to Kloster, New Jersey in 1963 and became active in his community and served on the local Board of Health as president and was a longtime member of the Recreation Commission, a member of the Youth Guidance Council, and a member of the local swim club. He was twice elected to the local borough council. He is married to Mary Keene Nusillo, and they have two children, Mary and Christopher, and two grandchildren, Brian and Sean. Ralph enjoys all sports and keeping fit at the gym. However, golf is now his primary avocation. Ralph, I welcome you to the stage. Dr. Fugate, Dr. Cornelius, and uh, members of the faculty, honored guests, graduates, their families and friends. I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, this is a day, oddly enough, where there happens to exist a confluence of decades. Uh, this is the completion of the first 10 years of the Humanities Graduate Program. And coincidentally, it's the 60th year since I graduated from <laughs> Uh, for my baccalaureate degree. Uh, and I'm glad to celebrate both milestones with you. You might say it took me a, a, it was a long time coming before I got there. Obtaining my master's degree was something I had planned to do <clears throat> to pursue 60 years ago. But life got in the way. The sudden passing of my father changed the plan. Uh, instead, I began working in the insurance industry, a field in which I had only cursory knowledge first as an underwriter, then as an agent and broker. It was and still is a very rewarding professional field of endeavor, and with many opportunities for success. An inveterate reader, I approached succeeding in the field by reading and taking courses in all aspects of the industry. I attained the Charter Property and Casualty Underwriter and Certified Insurance Counselor designations <clears throat> Both of which commit themselves whoops, both of which commit themselves to continuing uh, to uh, excellence, ethical conduct, and continuing education in the insurance field. Another aspect I enjoyed was teaching insurance and business courses at local colleges. I did quite well in this discipline and, re and retired seven years ago. Reading and study directly improved my ability to be successful and it is a habit I have no intention of discarding. Since I am also goal-oriented, the humanities program here at Wilson was perfect for my requirements. The tuition was reasonable, and I could concentrate on my long-standing interest in Shakespeare and literature. More importantly, it provided me with a distant goal, which I have now achieved. I preface my remarks with this background primarily to emphasize that reading is the key element in whatever success I've attended, uh, I've obtained in business and life. In my opinion, reading in the humanities is also the best way to understand and cope with the daily problems we face. It is obvious that we're in a turbulent time. The horrendous war in the Ukraine, the upheaval to, the so to society caused by COVID-19, 
I understand we just passed the one million death mark, um, according to the New York Times, in, just for the United States. Uh, finally, the upsurge in social concerns with racism, gender equity, and abortion. But has there ever been a non-turbulent time in the history of the United States, or the world for that matter? Just in the last 80 years, there have been wars, police actions, uh, and armed insurrections. In that same period, there have been several deadly epidemics, polio, flu, SARS, MRSA, etc. And the problems brought about by differentiating people by shadings of color, gender preference, or personal beliefs in that time are legion. One answer to addressing and understanding these concerns, a key element in any academic endeavor, is to read, interpret, question, and act upon one's conclusions, preferably with civility. Listen to counterarguments with an open mind. Question the assertions of both real and fake news, particularly unsubstantiated assertions. Uh, I'm, while I may not agree with your ultimate conclusions, and I probably won't, I'm very argumentative, I will defend your right to say whatever you believe, and I would expect the same consideration. Education and the pursuit of knowledge is and should be never-ending. In particular, study in the arts and history can be a wealth of information that is applicable to every walk of life and at any time in life. Consider Sadayana's admonition. Those who do not read history are bound to repeat it. The same dictum can be said for those who do not acquaint themselves with the insights into the human condition of a Shakespeare or the prescient exposition of George Orwell's excursion uh, into brainwashing and the prevalence of the big lie, something we're seeing a lot of today with, quote, false news. To sum it up, for me, reading and the study of humanities is the best part of humanity. Exposure to human creativity and imagination, and it should be cre uh, treasured and enjoyed. In this august gathering, much of my observations may charitably de be described as preaching to the choir, and all of your, the choir here. Um, you, you know a lot of this, but it never hurts to remind us of the continuing benefits of reading and learning, especially in an educational setting. My wife Mary strongly emphasized that brevity is a virtue, but before I go, I would like to spend my own sincere congratulations to all of today's graduates in every discipline. We did it, you did it. Well done and good job. Your perseverance toward this degree while contending with the vagaries and problems of everyday life, which Dr. Fugate mentioned, will stand you in good stead for the rest of your life. Enjoy your accomplishments here at Wilson and good fortune to you all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Ralph. I think your words ring especially true on this day, and I think we all can agree that the lifelong pursuit of knowledge and understanding are keys to success. Thank you for sharing. We pause in our ceremony now to recognize three esteemed members of the Wilson College family with the conferral of trustee emeriti honors. Judy K. Young, a 1963 graduate of Wilson and a member of the Board of Trustees, will confer upon Jean Crawford Beck the honor of trustee emerita in abstentia. Dr. Beck is a 1965 graduate of the college. Rona S. Applebaum, a 1976 graduate of Wilson and a member of the Board of Trustees, will confer upon Trudy Warner Blair, the honor of trustee emerita. Trudy is a classmate of Rona's, also graduating from Wilson in 1976. And lastly, Robin J. Burstein, past chair of the Board of Trustees and currently vice chair of the Committee on Trusteeship and Governance for the Board of Trustees, will confer upon John W. Gibb the honor of trustee emeritus in abstentia. Judy? President Fugit. 
members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, friends, and the reason we're all here today, our most honored participants, the graduate class of 2022. I begin with an epigraph as if this were a printed book. We are all made of cells, the components of our bodies which carry out life's functions. From A Career in Science by Dr. Jean Crawford Beck. And thus begins Jean's journey and relationship with cell science. Jean is a 1965 graduate of Wilson Phi Beta Kappa and Magna Cum Laude with departmental honors in chemistry, followed by a PhD from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and postdoctoral fellow appointments from Johns Hopkins and Harvard University. But before that, as a junior in high school in 1959, an article in Scientific American magazine introduced her to Watson and Crick's discovery of DNA, and she was hooked on the idea of a career in research. Wilson College ticked all the boxes for Jean, close to home, a woman's college, and a strong science program. She majored in chemistry and took every possible science course, cementing her love of research. Jean was the first Wilson student to be permitted to do independent research in chemistry. One of the most exciting things about research for Jean, in her own words, has been the notion that no one in the world knows more about what I'm working on than I do, and that when my experiments work, I know things about nature that no one else in the world knows. Wow, what a special insight. Jean's professional career, spanning nearly three decades, concluded with 12 years at the Coriel Institute of Camden, New Jersey, from 1994 to 2006, retiring as professor and director of the Coriel Cell Repositories, which I'm told today is the world's most diverse biobank collection at one time, the largest cell repository in the world, with 32,000 cell lines. Her employment, professional activities, societies, committee responsibilities have touched the fields of human genetics, disease research, aging, mental illness, and obstetrics and gynecology, just to name a few. Jean joined the Wilson College Board of Trustees in 2000, serving three terms through 2009 and chairing the board from 2005 to 2008. She declares her proudest accomplishment during that time to be the Harry R. Brooks Complex for Science, Math, and Technology, which opened in January 2009. While chairing the Board of Trustees, she served on the Science Center Task Force and proved to be a valuable contributor to that project from planning to completion. Jean and her husband David are longtime Pines and Maple Society members and in 2001 established the Jean Crawford Beck 65 and David Paul Beck Endowment for support of the science faculty. In addition, she and David established a molecular biology lab in the Science Center and gifted a complete photographic darkroom to Lawrence Hall. Retirement? Not really. Let's call it career part three. Retiring from academic science, lab science, yes, but not from science. Jean and David have moved to a career in farming, specifically the growing of wine grapes, and as Jean says, chasing the Pinot Noir grape continues to be a passion that began back in their early marriage. Residents of Oregon since 2005, they established the Crawford Beck Winery in the Willamette Valley, Yamhill County. This new career, she says, 
is an extraordinary opportunity to apply in a very real way the core of my education to achieve an economic outcome. As a proponent to this day of liberal arts and supporter and champion of young women in science, she urges all of us to raise our hands in life, just like you did in class, to ask questions, to read and write, all for the common good. Thank you, Jean, for all you have done for Wilson and all you are because of Wilson. The college applauds you as you are aware, awarded the distinction of trustee emerita in absentia. Come back to campus soon. Jean is unable to attend in person, but has assured me she is watching the live stream link. Please join me in a round of applause for Jean. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, President Fugette. First, to the graduates, your evens, that gives you an extra bump up, being a, from 1976. And I want to add my warmest congratulations on your achievement. Well done. You should be proud and continued success because being at this school, being at Wilson College, has set you on your path. Second, I want to thank Dr. Barb Tenney, Chair of the Wilson College Board of Trustees, for having asked me on behalf of the board to present Trudy Warner Blair, class of 1976, my sister classmate, for recognition as a trustee emerita of Wilson College. Let me tell you a little bit about Trudy. Throughout her career, she has been an ardent supporter of Wilson College. She was a member of the Board of Trustees from 2003 to 2012, making her an Everett Pomeroy trustee. She served on many committees and chaired several during her tenure. She was key to Wilson College's fundraising activities, including chairing the annual fund and serving on the Capital Campaign's Steering Committee. In addition, Trudy served as board from 2008 to 2011. It was during this time that the 18th president of Wilson, Dr. Lorna Edmondson, announced her decision to retire on June 30th, 2011. To ensure continuity, Trudy immediately began planning to ensure a smooth transition, starting with the appointment of a presidential search committee. But due to her attention to detail, knowledge, and love of Wilson College, her insights, her foresight, her understanding of the critical need, and I underscore critical need to connect with the Wilson community for their input and counsel, as well as to keep all interested parties apprised of both the process and the milestones, Trudy was selected to chair that presidential search committee. Um, it's no surprise that on July 1, 2011, Dr. Barbara Mystic was inaugurated as the 19th president of Wilson College, again, to ensure continuity and a smooth transition. On the professional side, Trudy also has a wealth of accomplishments. With decades of experience in strategic planning, analytics, metrics, marketing, governance, I can go all and on, in both the profit and the not-for-profit sectors. She serves currently as a board governance consultant for the Association of Governing Boards of Universities and Colleges. And that's an organization very important because it focuses on empowering colleges, university, for using universities and foundation boards to govern with knowledge and confidence. Her corporate experience includes a wide variety of executive positions for someone as young as you are. At Arvo's Communications, Trudy served as Senior Vice President of Marketing. At Nortel Network, she had several senior positions, including product line management. And it was not surprise in my search, because it's been many, many years since Trudy and I had the opportunity to talk, 
So thank goodness for the internet, which after reading her accomplishments, I have no doubt Trudy helped to develop. But I learned in my search that Trudy received Nortel's President Award for her key role in, del in delivering breakthrough internet telephone, a, a, the breakthrough internet telephone product called Centrix IP. I said this to Trudy yesterday, and I'm gonna say it to you. I had no idea what that is, what that was. So I called my spouse, who thankfully happens to be a communications engineer, to explain what this was. Oh my gosh, you know this person? The call politely ended when he started overloading my synapses with terms such as VOIP and Syntrax. I'm trusting many of you know what that is. That was a, a totally foreign language to me. Suffice to say, my husband has Trudy Warner Blair at the top of his communications rock star list. That's what a invention she was involved with. Last but not least, Trudy was also an executive at Verizon Communications. No doubt many of you have phones if you don't have iPhones. Her biggest accomplishment, however, is doing all this while being a devoted and loving wife, mother, daughter, and sister. So ladies and gentlemen, you too will be able to balance because if there's anything you learn at Wilson, it's to, it's to balance all your, all your desires as well as your needs. I'll end her accomplishments on education because that's what we are here to celebrate in regards to what you have achieved. In addition to her BS degree from Wilson College, where she graduated Phi Beta Kappa, Trudy also has an MBA from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Trudy as a classmate and a friend, then and as a friend and an admirer today, you continue to be my role model. Your receiving trustee emeritus status is most deserved, so please join me in welcoming Trudy Blair to the podium so she can receive her award. Thank you. Congratulations to all the graduates today at the beginning of your careers, not the end. What can I say about John Gibb? To begin with, he is a legacy. When I roasted him after his first term, I said his mother, a Wilson graduate, was so disappointed not to have a daughter to send here she told her babe in arms that when he was old enough, he was to serve on the Wilson board. And so he did. Jerry Voros, who was chair of trusteeship, called me with great excitement in 1996. There was a man who was interested in becoming a trustee whose mother was an alumna. And better still, he worked for Sally May, so he had an understanding of finance. And around then, frankly, we had a rather inept finance vice president in charge. So this was indeed a find. And so it came to pass that his mother's wish was fulfilled. John was elected to the board in 1997, in 2000, in 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2013. You mention a committee, and John chaired it accept advancement or finance. And soon, after joining the board, he went to work for Roger Staubach, which started a run of Wilson alumna on the board begging for autographed photos of his new boss. He served as vice chair from 2008 to 2011, 
without ever referring to it in the same way John Nance Gardner referred to the vice presidency. And in 2011, he ascended to the board chairmanship. He served during a rather tumultuous time of the commission, which made transformative changes here while never losing his aplomb. About his third year on the board, we were seated together at dinner. I asked him, well, where did you grow up? And he said, near Johnstown. I said, oh, I said, Winber? He said, no, a small town called Evansburg. John, I said, that's the county seat for Cambria County, for heaven's sakes. That started me asking, do you know so-and-so? And of course, they were his classmates at the high school where his parents both taught. That conversation began a personal friendship, which has lasted to this day, and included the search for the president, which we co-chaired, without the benefit of a search firm. I am honored to have been asked to honor John, my dear friend, on the special occasion for him and Wilson. Unfortunately, he's not able to join us today, but I understand he's watching on live stream. Please join me in congratulating John on this well-deserved award. Congratulations to my friend Trudy and to Gene and John. Uh, I look forward to presenting uh, your plaques when you're back on campus next. Now, the reason we are all here. Dr. Alyssa Heil, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty, will you now present the candidates? Candidates for graduate degrees, will you please stand? Mr. President, the faculty have examined these candidates and attest that they have respectively completed the requirements for the degree of Master of Education Master of Educational Technology, Master of Mass Customized Learning, Master of Special Education, Master in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts and Humanities, Master of Applied Leadership, and Master of Science in Nursing. It has been recommended by the faculty to the board of trustees that these degrees be conferred upon them. Mr. President, it is with pleasure and pride that I present to you the candidates for graduate degrees. Candidates for graduate degrees. By the authority granted to me by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the Board of Trustees of Wilson College and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Education, Master of Educational Technology, Master of Mass Customized Learning, Master of Special Education, Master in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts and Humanities, Master of Applied Leadership, and Master of Science in Nursing, respectively, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. You may now be seated. But not for long. <laughs> Graduates, please stand when your degree is announced. Master of Education degree candidates, will you please come forward to receive your diploma from the president and be hooded by Eric C. Michael, Director of Graduate Education Programs. Following students have completed the degree requirements for the Master of Education. Justin Patrick Alleman. <laughs> Jennifer Elaine Anderson.
Rachel Aaron Myers Bartlett. Elizabeth Aaron Butler. Erica Lee Carter. Brooke Clue. Adrian Janelle Gregory. Jill Marie Kaiser. Emily C. Magaha. Catherine Yeo. <laughs> the following students have completed the degree requirements for the Master of Educational Technology. Darlene Elizabeth Badoli. Sarah Elizabeth Kreider. Laura Gingrich. Amy Kathleen Golden. C.G. Roseanne Holthouse. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Kreider. Nikki Marie Lair. Rebecca Faith Lyon. <laughs> Ashley Lee Maurer. <laughs> Caitlin Marie McBride. Nicole Lynn Miller. Thomas Francis Nicholas Jr. Hannah May Schellenberger. Following students have completed the degree requirements for the Master of Mass Customized Learning. Sandra W. Terman. And the following students have completed the degree requirements for the Master of Special Education. Megan Lee Dougherty. <laughs> Amy.
Andrea Lynn Gilbert. Caitlin Grace Hoover. Nicole Marie Kolarik. Nisa Louise Makowicki. Miranda Gal Pisak. Elizabeth A. Sterneman. Bailey Marie Wibley. The following have completed the degree requirements of Master in Teaching English to speakers of other languages. Yuk Ling Wang. The following students have completed the degree requirements of Master of Fine Arts. Zachary R. Betty Neagle. Thank you. Sharika Anye Hooks. Regina Klenjowski Schmidt. Thank you. Olivia Henley Ratliff. Regina Jane Rice. Blair Ritchie. Kelsey Morgan Rupp. The following students have completed the degree requirements for the Master of Arts in Humanities. Joy Desiree Merchant. Thank you. Ralph J. Ursillo. The following student has completed the degree requirements for the Master of Applied Leadership. <laughs> First one, Katie Diane Shank. <laughs> the following has completed the degree of Master of Science in Nursing. Mark Ryan Barnes. <laughs> Kimberly Michelle Irwin. Mm -hmm. We'll 
some blue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Julie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Andrew J. Munchell. Honored guests, I formally present to you the graduate class of 2022. I'd now like to welcome Ms. Lynn D'Astasio, a 1974 graduate of Wilson and president of the Alumni Association of Wilson College to the podium. Allow me to repeat to the members of the classes of 2022, congratulations on your accomplishments. This is wonderful. Very, very happy. Some of you are already graduates of Wilson and what a wonderful testament to Wilson that you chose to stay on or come back to pursue a higher degree here. Others of you are getting your first degree from Wilson, and we are delighted to welcome you now as alumni and alumnae of this wonderful institution. By taking an advanced degree, you have moved further down the path to the professional goal you have set for yourself. Some of you are finished with your schooling at this point, but I'm sure that others will go further, either deeper along the path you are now on, or perhaps in a new direction altogether. One thing of which I am sure, you will find that your time at Wilson has not just prepared you in your field of study, but has also instilled some basic characteristics in you that will serve you well, no matter where the path before you leads. Wilson is a place of curiosity and inquiry inspiring its students to explore and ask questions and to trust their instincts. You are well equipped to meet the challenges ahead, whatever they may be. You are now part of a group of thousands of women and men who have graduated from Wilson. We welcome you to the Alumni Association of Wilson College and encourage you to embrace your status as Wilson alums. Wilson graduates have left here and gone on to do an amazing array of things with their lives. All of their stories, and now yours, serve to inspire future generations. Wilson graduates have fought for the right of women to vote. They have produced movies, written books, conducted important and impactful research. They have worked as diplomats, soldiers, preachers and missionaries, FBI agents, veterinarians, nurses and doctors, lawyers, elected officials, business owners, teachers and librarians, entrepreneurs, corporate executives, you name it. You'll go places that those who went to Wilson in the past might not have even been able to imagine because the world has changed so much, but you are now a part of Wilson and we hope that you will share your stories as your future unfolds. We are all here cheering you on because you are one of us. Welcome again to the Alumni Association of Wilson College. We're delighted to have you join us, and I hope to have the pleasure of seeing you often in the future. Thank you. Almost there. A few housekeeping details before we conclude. Following the singing of the alma mater, the lyrics of which are on the back of your program and the receiving of the benediction, please remain standing while the platform party, faculty and graduates recess. Members of the administration will dismiss each row of friends and family. Before we conclude the commencement exercises with the singing of the college's alma mater and the receiving of the benediction, it is now my opportunity to share some brief parting thoughts with you. 
Our graduate students are an important part of Wilson's story. For many, this camp campus may be fairly new to you. Your courses might have been delivered in a school district or online. For others, you might have spent a summer residency here or were regulars on campus for your courses. No matter how you received your Wilson education, Wilson is now and forever your home, and you will always be a part of this family. I suspect you are likely not the same person you were when you began your program of study. In fact, I am hopeful that you are a better person for what you have learned, what you have experienced, and for what you have given those around you. As a result of your experience with Wilson, you are empowered to be competent and critical thinkers, creative visionaries, effective communicators, honorable leaders, and agents of justice. I am confident that you leave Wilson College prepared not only to make important contribution to your fields, but to also make a difference in the world. In fact, we are counting on it. We are counting on you to be the difference makers, the people to change our communities, the nation, and indeed, the world. Graduates, today you make a place in history. Your story thus far has many chapters, but the ending has not yet been written. You have the ability to determine it. And yes, your future will have amazing new opportunities. But more importantly, your ending will be defined by your contribution to humanity. It is time for you to not only find your bold, but to live your bold. It is important now more than ever for you to show the world what your Wilson education can help you accomplish. Decide what kind of person you want to be in the world. When your journey on this planet is done, how will you be remembered? I suspect it won't be for the job you held or for how much money you made, but for the difference you made in the lives of others. I know that Wilson has taught you to make a difference, and I hope you will take this unique opportunity to lead by example, because the world needs you now more than ever before. No matter where the next chapter of your life takes you, your Wilson family will be right there with you, even with distance. We are one Wilson, a family, and we want to celebrate your success and help you get back up when you stumble. I hope you will never forget this remarkable institution and that you will always find your way home to our beautiful campus. We wish you only the best you make us beam with pride. We already miss you. We love you. Godspeed. So you see in the bulletin that I have a Master of Divinity. I also have a Master of Fine Arts degree. So if this degree doesn't work out, or even if it does, you're welcome to come back and get another one. You'll also learn the more schools you go to, the more schools ask for money. Wilson, where I didn't even go to school, by the way, if you join the Give Every Month Society, they send you socks. So, just saying. There'll be a little something extra in my, oh, there's not going to be anything extra in my paycheck. But. <clears throat> Blessings on all of you. You all matter. Something I realized over the course of the last couple of years is none of us heard that enough. You all matter. You have tremendous value in this world. The fact that you are investing in yourself to come back and learn, to go out and serve again is huge. And I applaud each and every one of you for it. That's a tremendous gift. Use it for good. Use it wisely. Don't let the world weigh you down. As Wes said, you go from us with love. And you are always welcome to come back and share um, and just be present because you take a piece of us with you. And we are grateful for that. I leave you a poem. I'll read it to you so you don't have to come up and look at it. <clears throat> it's called I Wish You Enough by Bob Perks. I wish you enough sun to keep your attitude bright. I wish you enough rain to appreciate the sun more, or in this case, risk of rain, to appreciate the sun more. I wish you enough happiness to keep your spirit alive. I wish you enough pain so that the smallest joys in life appear much bigger. I wish you enough gain to satisfy your wanting. 
I wish you enough loss to appreciate all that you possess. And I wish you enough hellos to get you through the final goodbye. Blessings on each one of you. And after we sing the alma mater and we process, go in peace. So, and at this time, I invite everyone to stand. We're going to sing the alma, pot, alma mater. They're graduates, so they've already memorized it. For everyone else, as, as President Fugit said, it's on the back of the bulletins. So everyone sing out and sing loud. Thank you.